So, what are we going to cover today? Well, uh, environmental health officers haven't always been called uh, environmental health officers. Um, back in the day, we were uh, once known as the sanitary inspectors or uh, public health officers. And so the terms have been used reasonably interchangeably up until more recently when we received um, a, a official recognition through the Chartered Institute of Environmental Health. We had our Royal Charter. Um, and so the duties which we've had have morphed from uh, a role which was predominantly focused on trying to deal with um, infectious disease issues uh, associated with the sort of conditions you might um, assume, uh, so you might associate with developing countries. And so we still retain those responsibilities and those legal powers um, and the requirement for that uh, that work. Uh, and so we still intervene where we have outbreaks of infectious disease and we still deal with drainage and sanitation problems uh, and deals with uh, with pests um, and infestations. Uh, and so this is what some might term as the less glamorous side of our work, but actually it's still uh, nuts and bolts uh, public health. This is still uh, a, a very core part of our work. And so um, what we're going to be doing in the, um, this uh, e-lesson is looking at some of the legislation um, around, which has been around for an awfully long time now, about how to deal with this wonderful legal phrase, um, filthy and verminous conditions. So we've got filthy and verminous items. We've got uh, filthy and verminous um, uh, pres as we've got filthy and verminous premises. Um, we've got accumulations of noxious matter, um, and so these are some old legal terms, uh, some delicious language, but also um, some very old legislation to do with problems that surprisingly enough occur quite often today. And so often uh, when you get these, it's difficult to work out if you're dealing with a situation where you've got uh, someone who's just hoarding, which they have a right to do if it's not threatening the health of other people, or whether it's someone uh, who is um, uh, has uh, is starting to threaten the health of other people. Um, and so it's when it starts to threaten the health of other people that you step in and start to take action. Because by stepping in and starting to take action, um, you are infringing the rights of the individual for the betterment of the rights of the many. And so you've got to make that decision um, uh, before you take your actions. And so I'll be giving you some examples to take you through some of the thought processes so that you can spot when to take action and when to step back and let someone live the life that they have chosen to lead, even if it is not the ideal life uh, and the sort of conditions that we would normally associate with being OK. So enjoy the lesson, but I would add before you go through it uh, that there is a, a caveat with this lesson, a little warning. This is quite a lot of very strong images in this e-lesson. Um, and if you are easily upset um, or if you have, if you're um, in the middle of eating some food, uh, then please be aware that through this e-lesson you will see some unpleasant images um, and you will hear about some things which will um, touch at your heartstrings a little bit um, as these cases come with people attached to them and the situations they get themselves into can be quite uh, heart-rending to see. And so um, as you go through this lesson, uh, please take it a step at a time. If you're uncomfortable with it, take a break and then come back to it. Thank you very much.